Okay, it's back to basics in InDesign, and I wanted to go over text frame options. When we put um, a text inside of any kind of container, whether it is this weird oval shape, okay, or um, a rectangular uh, type of frame, okay, um, we have certain controls um, that are available to us in the um, text frame options dialog box. And uh, what I'd like to do also is just kind of give you a vision for, you know, we can put text in um, any any shape really, even this weird one. Well, I'm going to make a kind of a regular one here. And how do I make these frames, okay, even if it's this um, oval shape, how do I make these frames so that they are um, you know, containing text instead. Well, again, it's a matter of selecting the type tool, and as I hover over the frame, it actually changes to show me um, the in shape, and now it's a little circle or dot line around it, as opposed to up here, it's a rectangular little dotted line. Um, when I hover over it, it changes and tells me, yeah, if you click in this, we're going to be a text uh, frame. So if I click, all right, now my blinking cursor is right here, and I know that the X is gone out of the object. And let's go ahead and put some placeholder text in here. Under Type drop-down menu, fill with placeholder text. All right, I'm going to make this into like this little a quote, a pretend quote, because Putting it in your text into um, a circle, oh yeah, could lend itself to some sort of um, like story, story book or something. But mainly, I use the this kind of thing for like a little quote of some sort, putting it into a shape. Sometimes I do need to follow a shape um, just because of the circumstances. Um, but I'm gonna make the text size just a little bit bigger. Okay, that's too much, too much stuff. Okay, and let's just make it, um, now when you're doing a quote, it shouldn't be really long anyways um, in the first place. So we'll go like this. And I want to put, uh, what I want to do is take this box uh, or this um, shape and I want to put a background on it. A lot of uh, people who are new to, to this, they will take and make a frame, okay, and then make it a color, and, okay, let's make it a tint. <laughs> and then they'll take another one, okay, and um, put it on the inside of it, so that their text frame, or the text is um, inset inside of it, like so, so that I don't touch the edges. So I make sure I don't touch the edges, and uh, okay, that's a heck of a lot more work, okay, just for not touching the edges and things like that. So we do want some controls instead of doing two boxes, what I like to do is, well, I want to shape this a little bit more roundy. And I'm going to put a fill color using this watches panel. And I want to, let's make it a, a tint of some sort. Okay, so what the problem is here, if we um, take a look at, I want to zoom in here, is that we're touching the edge of a shape with our text. And so we need to actually push the text away from those edges and bring it inside of that shape so that the shape itself is nice and then um, the text will follow it, but there will be a little bit of a margin. That's called inset. And uh, it's controlled by um, our text frame options. Now, to get to the text frame options, that, that's actually working with the object itself. So if I select it um, not with the tag tool but with the, with my selection tool then I'm going to go under object 
and to get to it it's text frame options or if you like key commands which I do um, command B on a Mac control B on a, a Windows and select that and we get the text frame options dialog box now I'm basically going to be going in the general area and we may have seen these in some other videos just usage but I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a rundown and then um, basic op baseline options uh, that may give you a fine-tuned adjustment to make everything look beautiful and pretty okay so our general options okay as we go in here uh, number of columns then inset spacing and then vertical justification uh, columns of course uh, on a on a an oval shape that's a little bit odd so if I put two columns yeah it's going to divide it in into two um, on the right and then um, the left and then put a gutter now default gutter for gutter width is um, 0 0.1667 uh, it's, it's a pretty good um, size and it keeps the text away from each other anything smaller well 0 0.125 sometimes I use but going any smaller than that okay we're jumping down or up by an eighth of an inch when we're using inches okay all right so um, I'm just going to go back to to one now inset spacing okay is going to be um, on a, a on an object such as an oval that it's not a rectangle of any kind then you're just going to get the inset and it does an overall inset instead of top, bottom, left, and right, which you would have on a rectangle. So um, how, how much should I push that in? Now watch if I click on the arrows to go up, then you're going to see a change here. Now the um, text has been pushed towards the inside. In fact, I'm going to go off a little bit more because I like um, that effect. Okay, And so that makes it look a little bit nicer. The, the text is not touching the edge. There's a little bit of a margin. We do like a margin. And then um, one other thing, and I wanted to, to show you this, the vertical justification. Now from top to bottom, look, this uh, doesn't fill all the way. So if I wanted to, I can center it and within the space from top to bottom, then it's going to uh, look a lot better. Now, what if I wanted to uh, make it so that it filled that completely? Well, with a, an oval, my advice to you is, it's a short quote, um, you should not put like, Articles written in you know shapes unless it's something really unusual. It's usually a short bit of text and What I do like to do then uh, this is one of the very few Times and I'm going to go ahead and click OK for now one of the very few times where um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select the text here and in the paragraphs I'm going to center the text um, I center body copy very rarely unless it's something like this situation where it will fill it and, and look a little bit better. Now, um, what else can I do? Um, I could justify this all the way out, but that leaves rivers of information. Like, it spreads out between um, the words too much. So I don't like that in general. And then in my... Um, again, I'm going to go back to text frame options because I wanted to show you you don't have to just center it. You could justify it, which makes the letting automatically pushed um, to its limit. Now, in this case, um, I'm thinking that I also need to turn off um, my hyphenation. So I'm going to go in the control panel for the paragraph and turn off hyphenation. All right, so... It's not perfect, you know, the text, but within the oval shape, it does fit in there and it feels a lot more comfortable. Now in a, um, a rectangular shape, and we can put on all those controls as well. 
um, let's say we use uh, some placeholder text. Okay, let's say we go with two columns, which is a little bit easier on the eyes to for reading purposes. Okay, so let's go back to our text frame options. All right. Now, do I want to inset on this case? No, not really. You don't have to in, in, inset everything, especially if you're going to just leave this as the color background, the color of um, your page in the first place. All right, so I'm not going to do inset, but um, I wanted to show you some of these um, baseline options. Okay, so if we kind of zoom in just a little bit here um, to to our text and you see the top here of the um, uh, my text frame the top of it I want you to watch that in the placement of the, the first lines of text the baseline the default is the ascent which the ascender of a um, letter form which would be like the top of this H okay touches that and that's just fine by me I'm used to that and I can count on it you could go to the cap height which um, your capital heights like this H here now that's touching it okay and my A sender on the A, on the lowercase H is actually taller than the cap height alright so then we could go by the letting which means that airspace that you see in between the um, lines it brings and has a little bit of airspace in there as well I'm not used to that at all but you know if you really need to move things around within in the inside of your um, text frame then you can do that X height well it just does that it takes the X height the top of the, the lowercase letters and sets it up right along the edge of the top of the text frame okay um, fixed well we can take and it just goes to the um, the baseline and you can uh, do minimums and maximums and you can put uh, you can put points or pikas in here as well well I don't um, quite like that and I'm gonna go back down to zero on it because we can you know uh, I can use the minimum all I want but you know it I like to have something that I can count on okay so that's um, how that one uh, works there so in any case what uh, what can we do to instead of having to bring up this text frame options all the time there's one other way that you can do this and um, you'll see that having a, a text frame selected, okay, I do have access to some of those controls here in the control panel up at um, the top right hand towards the right, okay. So um, what do I have? I have uh, how many columns here I can do. Um, I can do the gutter width. I can balance these columns out between each other, which is kind of cool. We can align it to top, middle, bottom, and we'll, just like we did here, we are justified. So those are little clickable elements there. Okay, and that's really all I want to cover about the text frame options. It's kind of a review for everybody. It prepares you for page layout.